right, well, I'm just going to hop in. Um, thanks for joining. And I know we only have a couple on the line, but we're recording this so that you, we can actually share this throughout the collaborative. Um, certainly, um, we are the mindset through American Heart Association that ultimately, if we're going to make some inroads in changing the quality of heart failure, as we are working on with stroke and as we are working on with STEMI, that we're going to have to have some data. To date, um, tar, uh, Get With the Guidelines heart failure has not been highly adopted in the state of Arkansas. Um, we have one site, but I still believe it has a lot of potential. There's a limited version of the form, which takes far less time to abstract. And we also have the opportunity to do some uploading from the EHR. Um, also, we've changed our pricing structure so that small hospitals actually pay less. So there may be some potential for us to have some heart failure collaborative um, pricing for Get With The Guidelines heart failure. So I'm going to give you a quick little overview of, of Get With The Guidelines. We have some hot off the press analytics that show the business um, case for using Get With The Guidelines heart failure. So I'm going to share that also. And Kristen, if people type in, I guess they have access to Q&A, will you just interrupt me? if there are questions, um, so just type in down in the Q&A or come off mute and because we, we want to answer your specific questions. So I'm going to give a quick overview. Anything else? I hear we've got more people joining, so that's great. If you're just joining um, and you didn't, type, didn't log in with your name or you're using um, the phone, just um, type your name in the Q&A so we know who's all on the phone. All righty. Um, let's get started. Of course, my husband's now calling me. Let me cancel that. All right. Uh, get with the guidelines, heart failure. Um, anything else I need to know, Kristen, before we start? No, uh -uh. I'll let you know if there's any, any questions. All right. Got it. Okie doke. Um, this is a program that's been around for a long time, 2005. Um, we know that heart failure continues to be a growing population. We have over 650 participating hospitals and get with the guidelines. With, I believe it's now exceeded 2 million heart failure records. So in the United States, if you're discharged from a hospital, about 25% of patients are discharged from a get with the guidelines heart failure hospital. And certainly you probably know about target heart failure, which was um, started in 2011. But the whole point of that, and it's much of what we've been discussing in our different subcommittees, is the transition, the transition from hospital to discharge to outpatient setting. You can see over the years that the number of patients in Get With The Guidelines have greatly increased. And certainly the things that we're talking about measuring in Arkansas, ACE, ARB, ARNI, and evidence-based beta blockers are two of the top achievement measures that we use across the United States and the world. However, the system also is set up to measure other items that either that have different levels of evidence behind them, but certainly the reporting measures are ones that probably are just for quality improvement, where the achievement and quality measures are based on the evidence. Um, it's, a, it's an online tool. You basically, you don't have to put it on, you can access it from anywhere. So it is not it's called the patient management tool. You don't have to put anything on your computers. It's web-based. It allows you, of course, to be able to add new patients, to review data. Um, I'll show you some of the reporting. I'm actually going to log in for you. And then it gives you many, many resources. Um, I believe the majority of your hospitals, because um, the Department of Health cooperates with us on Get With the Guidelines stroke for the entire state, already are, have people in your organization who are familiar with Get With the Guidelines um, from the stroke side. And of course, um, quite a few of you using coronary artery disease as well. Um, also on the system is as you move through different abstractors, then there's an introduction. Um, you can actually learn about the tool online. So we've got built-in training mechanisms that are there. We also have um, training for how to use the reporting, as well as how to download all your data. All that training is available right there inside the patient management tool. The abstraction process is a fairly straightforward. This is not a limited form. So as I mentioned, I think for our project, if we were to have hospitals join us, we would want to just start with a limited form 
or what we're calling the essentials and other modules where it's just the things we need to know. But this gives you an idea of how the system is set up where you're just clicking, you're able to put in your various um, medications, you're in, able to put the different procedures that a patient has. Um, you are, of course, able to look at um, their vaccinations, although I saw we just had some new information on vaccinations come up. Um, what, how, where they went uh, on their discharge. And I wanna point out something, as you look at each of these pages, the required fields are only the bold. So there may be more fields, but it's only the bold questions that are required. So what was their discharge status? Because we certainly know that patients that go home are in better condition than those who are going to skilled nursing. Um, I'll log on and show you this live, but at discharge, what are the vitals? What, um, what their labs look like? Um, whether or not a patient happens to be comfort measures only. Um, the exact medications which are available in drop down um, so that it's not something you ever would have to type in as well as if a patient has a contraindication. So certainly with our ACE, ARB, ARNI measure that we've selected as a clinical subgroup, you would actually be able to look at the reasons patients are not receiving an ACE, ARB, or an ARNI. We're also able to look at the risk interventions and be able to, this is where you can put the date and time of their follow-up appointment. We know that that is critical, that patients who have a date and time for their follow-up appointment while they're still an inpatient are more likely to attend that and less likely to be readmitted in those seven days. Um, again, the things that are required are just the highlighted. So you can see their smoking cessation is required, but you're not required to, if you want to, you're not going to keep track of activity or symptoms worsening. You don't have to. It's, it's up to the institution. Um, you can also refer patients to different programs, for instance, outpatient heart failure management or assign them to different tools that exist within Get With The Guidelines that are available to all of our participants. They're actually available to you even if you're not a Get With The Guidelines hospital. And then the system has comprehensive reporting that allows you to look at the patients that receive um, different amounts of care. So I'm gonna log on here in a second and show you that. Um, any questions, Kristen? I'm gonna switch over to the business case here. Not yet. Okay. So a lot of times, and I think that there's been a big hesitation of hospitals, once the core, heart failure core measure went away, many of our hospitals, although we still have more hospitals every year, year over year, but we had a lot of hospitals actually leave our program because they said, well, we don't have a required core measure anymore, so we don't need to use Get With The Guidelines heart failure. So we actually um, went to a third party we exported our data to that organization because we wanted to know whether there really is, we believe in our, in our gut, there's a, a benefit to using Get With The Guidelines, but we needed to be able to show that and have that evaluated by the third party. And so we have. So um, Get With The Guidelines, we collected data. We actually took um, part of the hospitals in 2014. They were selected because we, and then we compared them to a control group of non-Get With The Guidelines hospitals of the same size and region. I will tell you that we did um, exclude three large academic medical centers just because they weren't, it wasn't really a peer assignment, so these do exclude them. We ran statistics, or our, our partner ran statistics based on inpatient discharges. And we used all the Medicare cost and reimbursement information um, so that we could look at payer mix, service mix, and region. And so what we found was that from 2014 to 2017, that hospitals who choose to use Get With The Guidelines, they actually accelerate the number of cases they're able to take care of. In fact, our Get With The Guidelines participants grew 21% over four years and actually attracted 50 additional cases a year while our control group actually lost heart failure volume. And this kind of makes sense because if you are having, um, we'll see later, lower readmissions and lower length of stay, you actually have beds available without additional staffing to be able to take care of more patients appropriately. So 
we were um, very glad to see this growth from 14. Now we looked at a lot of our hospitals in Arkansas were going to be smaller, so we wanted to say, does this apply across smaller hospitals? So um, less than 200 beds, and we have a lot of less than 200 bed hospitals in Arkansas. The folks that used Get With The Guidelines, they actually grew 7.1% and their peer facilities lost heart failure volume of 4.8. So actually, um, Get With The Guidelines hospitals under 200 beds had the greatest increase in volume and the lowest length of stay. So just because you're a small hospital doesn't mean that Get With The Guidelines heart failure would not be a good tool for you. A lot of these patients you're keeping, you're not sending them out. Here we are with the 200 to 400 bed hospitals where we had growth of 6.4% in Get With The Guidelines hospitals over their peers, adding more than 100 cases per year for this middle sized hospital. And then for our big hospitals, uh, the growth was, it was a smaller growth, 1.4% year on year, but it was still faster than the control group. So continue to give growth. Those hospitals are already seeing a lot of patients. Um, and so when you look at the different areas, definitely um, Get With The Guidelines is something that's gonna help you grow programs and not just for patients that um, aren't uh, financially of benefit. So we also looked at emergency department visits that Get With The Guidelines heart failure. And we did find that as, they create, as you create those relationships, that they did grow emergency department visits. And these weren't necessarily just um, heart failure related. Um, well, I guess these were specifically heart failure related, but it's a, it's a possibility if we're doing a good job with these patients and we are um, informing them properly that these increases won't just be um, inappropriate emergency department <laughs> visits. So that's kind of an interesting one, which could be good or bad. Oops. But here's the meat, here's the bread and butter. The, we saw significant reductions in length of stay. So hospitals, I mean, get with the guidelines, their length of stay, um, they, we started at 0 0.40 higher than the control mark, but over the four years, they actually reduced it and surpassed the 6.05 day national benchmark. So we were able to, over the years, see that Length of stay is going down for all hospitals, but that our Get With The Guidelines hospitals were able to do that um, even better, including if you're 200 beds or less, or if you're in the 2 to 400 size, or if you're greater than the 400. And it's interesting, um, it is true that our controls are actually lower in each of this, but um, it's possible that we're having a little sicker patient in those hospitals that have um, that are in Get With The Guidelines. So we need to look at that further. However, when you look at reducing um, excess patient days, it has a lot of impact on your dollar because if it costs us $2,400 to take care of those folks, when you're able to reduce that 0.4 days off your length of stay with our Get With The Guidelines, you're definitely able to share to save a significant amount. And the chart here is like, if you have 100 annual cases and you're able to reduce 0.4, that you're actually saving around $100,000 um, there. And if these are patients that are not going to be um, reimbursed, then that obviously is, is where you're getting that savings. We looked at that. And readmissions, here you are with your average readmissions. These are the different sizes of hospitals. I don't know why they put the less than 200 in the middle, but um, anyway, uh, the first one is 200 to 400. So get with the guidelines, hospitals were lower for readmissions. In all three categories, the get with the guidelines category is lower than their peers that did not have get with the guidelines. Readmitted 1.2% fewer patients. And then these are the dollar uh, ramifications for costs and Medicare penalties. So if you're 100, if you have 100 heart failure admissions, you have the opportunity of saving around $24,000 additional savings over that length of stay savings. So, and of course, it, it scales up based on you being a larger program. So 
there definitely is a benefit financially to working with Get With The Guidelines. And then more people go home. This happens to be the percentage of, um, certainly recovery in a SNF or an LTAC, it can be a most costly aspect. I know in Arkansas, we have a few of you who are doing the bundled payment. There's no question if a patient has to go to SNF or to LPAC that it's going to take a greater percent of that um, payment. Um, since 2015, Get With The Guidelines hospitals have discharged 2% more patients to home rather than to a second healthcare facility. So as you consider bundled payment or um, you, want, you want to be thinking about um, that as a reason to use Get With The Guidelines. So anyway, just hot off the press, you're actually the first group to see this, is that um, using Get With The Guidelines really can help you grow your heart failure program, and not just with patients who are coming back, coming back, and coming back, but actually being able to um, have more patients who are staying with you. And certainly by reducing the length of stay by 0.4, because all of our payments are not based on their length of stay, but based on the diagnosis, if they stay, fewer hours and you're able to put a new paying patient in those beds and so uh, reduce their length of stay by 0.4. So any questions that have come up as it relates to kind of this uh, cost model? I'm gonna log back in here. Um, Kristen, can you see my screen? I changed apps, so I wanna make sure you can still see it. Yes, I can see your demo. Um, okay, good. Log in. Thank and you. And if anybody time. has questions, you can um, hit star six to come off mute, or you can type them in the Q&A box. And this is Get With The Guidelines. We use a, a third party um, provider, Quintiles, who provides the, the um, detailed data for us, actually does the registry for us. And so when you log in to get with the guidelines, um, uh, normally you're going to be able to see your different modules. That's why we have Get Started here. This hospital would have the AFib, the coronary artery disease, the heart failure, resuscitation, and stroke. So they actually have all five of the available modules. Um, as I mentioned, almost every hospital in Arkansas um, has stroke because we have a contract with the, the state. And um, uh, many have CAT as well. So uh, those are moving along. However, in the area of heart failure, we have one uh, customer currently. And as we have seen by looking at how hard it is to get ACE, ARB, ARNI, and evidence-based beta blockers, um, it's not easy to find this data. So how can you prove you are doing well if you can't get a hold of that data and then be able to make interventions and improve? So this is kind of how it looks. You can enter in a new patient, or I'm going to just show you how um, it looks. This is not real data. This is just uh, bogus data, things that we've put in just to be able to look at. Um, as I mentioned, we have the opportunity to upload data from your electronic health record. We just successfully have done this with two or three hospitals, and so we'd we'll be glad to chat with your integration team to see if um, that's a possibility for you. This is a limited data set. That means you cannot find Cherie Boxberger in here, even if I've been a heart failure patient. You would have a cross-reference and know what number I am, and then you create an unrelated um, patient ID for me um, so that you're not, we're not um, divulging any sort of PHI or, we have some PHI in here, but it's called a limited data set. It's a, it's a very small amount that's used for research only, because you can see you have date of birth here and gender. So a few, a, a few demographics that have to be collected. This is the best part that normally we can upload easily from um, your a ACD or anything where you've got that information already. Again, it's only required if it's got the, the uh, bowl. We also, the, we can keep track of every physician that interacts. There's a built-in NPI in here. So I can actually go in and make sure all my doctors are in here. And then I can keep track of all the physicians who are involved. So that means I can keep track of hospitalists so that I can run reports for my hospitalist service. I can run, I can keep all the emergency departments so I can actually run reports by doctor in the emergency department. And then if you have different folks who are discharging patients, then you can actually run each of the measures by those physicians. 
This is particularly helpful in any sort of teaching um, settings. We just did this with Ben Taub Hospital, where we were then able to run um, reports on ACE, ARB, ARNI, and evidence-based beta blockers and aldosterone antagonists by doctor and by unit so that we could deploy um, staff, a teaching staff, to be able to look at those results with those physicians and identify the folks who are not providing guideline-directed care. And of course, this always needs to be done under medical leadership, and I know you all have some wonderful champions that could assist you in that. So when you um, put in the patient, you actually put in who their physicians were, certainly um, information related to their history, Again, just the bold ones are required. This is not a limited form, though. You, the limited form will have fewer um, elements than the one I'm showing you. What they came in on as it relates to medications at admission and then any sort of testing that was done um, initially. Again, paying attention to uh, the bolds. None of those are required, although this, these EKG, this EKG information is required. The other items are as needed. So you don't get into having to put in a bunch of things that you're not using. Certainly we use the ICDs because we need to, the, we are encouraging our hospitals to put in their primary heart failures only. We know that almost every patient in the hospital has a heart failure diagnosis. Um, and you can put in secondary and third and fourth and fifth, but we um, only encourage to start with that primary heart failure admission. You're keeping track of the things that are happening in the hospital, certainly EF, whether it be qualitative or quantitative, and whether they have, um, you're evaluating um, the left ventricle, if they're on medications while they're there in the hospital, ambulation, all sorts of, of the things that will be in your EHR. And then of course, important for our group, how are they being discharged? Where are they being discharged? You can see this is just a little drop down. You're not to, you don't have to hand type in anything. If they're comfort measures, of course, many of them fall, they'll fall out of some of our measures and not others if they had documentation to be comfort measures only. Um, the medications that they are sent home with, and I showed you this before, um, where you can just answer it and then be able to do the drop down. This one has a yes somewhere down here. Yeah, so they did not get an Arnie because this was a new onset, so they answered a yes that there was a dish, there was a contraindication. So this would not be in our, a fallout in our ACE ARB ARNI because there was a clinical reason they did not receive it. That is the beauty of using a registry instead of just getting raw data because you're able to exclude the people. This isn't cookbook medicine. There's reasons people don't get these medications and we can keep track of those. Um, so on and so forth with the various therapies if they had ICD therapy. Again, that's an opportunity actually to um, grow your EP business since a lot of patients don't realize that they're a candidate for um, ICD. I talked about their follow-up visits, a place to put that and make sure that's happening. You can also follow up the follow-up phone call scheduled and you can get that and we can run reports um, when you're planning to call them back, and that's something that our heart failure clinics are doing in some of our bigger settings, as well as be able to where you're going to see them afterwards in terms of referring them to some of our tools, the interactive workbook, um, getting them additional training, so at least 60 minutes of heart failure education, or that you're working with an advanced care plan um, with that patient. And then there are extra things. The thing that I particularly like is that, and we do have some hospitals that are actually putting in some of this data um, at the time the patients are in the hospital, and they end up having to change their, add the ICDs later, so they just use a principal diagnosis, an initial diagnosis, is that you're able to calculate the patients and all of the guidelines for that patient and whether or not they were in, if they're in compliance. So. Um, it's a good double check. These, of course, are the, the uh, recommendations for care, and it's a good place for you to see if a patient is um, missing something before discharge. Or I always tell them, even if they're missing and it's after discharge, you can still solve that. So 
some things that are good to know that are built in here are actually referral notes where you can actually take everything that was put into the system and send that out to their primary doctor. It'll actually grab out of the system the medications you had them leave on, their history, and what the outcome was. Um, and you can just uh, send this out to your referring doctors. That's all built in. There's also a patient education um, where actually you can click the education you'd like them to get and actually then open up those documents um, right in the system so that you can and then just print those. You can see that they, these education forms will be pertinent to what they their stay was. And then of course you can just pull it up and there you've got your the appropriate educational materials that you selected. See if I can get back. Okay. Um, anyway, that's that is that. I'd like to show you a little bit um, of reporting out of the way. Um, again, all the data you put in the system can be exported so you can look at it. Here's data upload is so that we can do those. We can work with your IT departments to upload data from your EHR so that you just have to so you have to put in fewer things. And then of course reporting. And once a system, once they have um, something in the system, you can run a report on it immediately. I'm going to make this a really long time frame just because um, this is pretend data and it's not particularly robust. So I'm just going to put in long time periods um, here. But you can literally, you know, we decided that we wanted to look at ACE ARB at discharge. So for each of the hospitals that are participating, they can look at their own ACE ARB at discharge. And then if they'd like, they can compare to all hospitals their size. I'm not going to do all hospitals because it makes it slow. So I'm going to compare my hospital to all hospitals with 100 to 300 discharges. Um, and then I can easily run that. Again, this is real-time data. So when your um, process improvement group is working, your QI group, you can actually be asking those questions and running those reports. And so for this Hospital, my hospital's at 97%, and other hospitals in the country who have hit with the guidelines are at 84. So I can feel like, and this is just pretend data again, but I can be able to run that and know what um, that I'm doing well, and to uh, be able to let folks know we've got something under control. Now, normally those aren't the things we're spending a lot of time on. We're spending more time. I'm trying to figure out how to get out of here more time with the things that we're not doing well. So I'll show you one of those if I can figure out how to close the screen. Huh. Weird. Huh. Just a second. Let's figure it out. Here. All right. Back to reports. You can do it over time, which is nice, and once you've been in the system for a while. But something that I particularly appreciate is the fact that I can look across um, different units, different doctors. So I can say, let's look at ACE ARB Army. And I just want to look at the ACE ARB Army performance for, um, for instance, males versus females. Is there certain patients that we are not doing because um, it's a woman or it's a man? Are we making decisions that are not uh, because based on the evidence? So I can here do compare ACE ARB Army and compare men and women. And so here we've got, you know, that male was 90, 97% and the females were 94%. So there are a few less women getting the care. Again, we're looking at totally bogus data. So that's probably, but that's something that you can look at. Another um, good way to filter it, um, for instance, let's look at uh, post-discharge appointment patients. And something that I have been working with a lot of hospitals on because these patients are not getting their appointments before they're discharged. So I have been comparing their arrival day. And this is kind of a no brainer, right? But if you are gonna come on Tuesday or Wednesday, it's likely you're gonna get discharged when on the weekend. And as a result, you may, um, need to really work on those patients that come on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So this is actually a way for you to look at um, performance on a given measure by the day they arrived at the hospital. And when you run this in real data, it really, um, we obviously didn't put this in in the sample, but it really shows that you've just got to focus on those patients that arrive on Tuesday and Wednesday and make a plan for their appointment 
because they're going to discharge on Saturday and Sunday, and you're not going to have a way to call and get those appointments done. So you're able to look at that. And then, of course, you can also, in addition, so this is the beauty of the system. Once you actually use it, is you can tell what's going on with your patients. Um, you can actually run reports, like I said, by certain physicians, and it'll actually um, share, show you their individual performance. I don't know if we have any of these on our patients, but we're going to do it here to show you. So it's more about using the data and less about putting the data in. And this example, it shows that these doctors, and this is how the report would look, that that physician during this time frame, all of their patients had a post-discharge appointment for heart failure. So um, those patients are doing well. So that gives you a way to look at that. And then real quickly, um, just so I can show you the other things that you can slice on, you can slice and dice on their payment source. It's really important to a lot of my mission-focused hospitals, some of the religious-based hospitals. They want to be able to demonstrate to their boards and supporters that all patients, regardless of their ability to pay, are receiving guideline-directed care. And so you can actually search by that. You can also look by the units, and you can see these are actually have been put in by um, this institution because these you would call your unit certain things so these are customized um, also whether the kind of heart failure they have day of the week whether they were discharged home you know what's the difference if they had to go to another facility you can look at the results for those patients as well so lots of great information that's right there and available and then you have the opportunity, and we're using this in all of our centers, to uh, be able to look at actually 30 days later, go and call them and keep track of what you learned. So they, they, this patient uh, was discharged on July 5th, so 30 days later I can call them and see how they're doing, um, if they've passed away, if they've been rehospitalized and be able to um, collect that information, especially whether they're on their medications. Here's the medications. And it carries this over, so it knows that this patient was prescribed an ACE at discharge. So now I'm just asking them if they've missed any doses, if they missed any doses, are they taking it 80% of the time, or if, um, if they have a new medicine that they just got. So a wonderful opportunity to look at what's happening um, after discharge. So that is kind of a, a, a demo of what's um, going on. You still on the 30-day form do education as well. So, and because we really want you to think about, and I would like to hear back, and and we'll send out what it, what data has to actually be collected in the limited form, but feel like it could take less time and be more effective to get the collaborative moving on, get with the guidelines heart failure instead of trying to do some individual data collection, or at least we should consider it. And then if we knew that we had four or five or seven hospitals that were interested of going out and seeing what kind of pricing breaks we could do, what we call kind of heart failure collaborative pricing to make this possible and then to work with your hospitals on uploading. So, um, we wanted you to be able to see the tool, and we'll send out some more information as well as this recording, um, because this could really, if we had the data for the state, at least from all of our collaborative providers, I think we would really be on the right track to uh, seeing how we're performing and making improvements. Kristen, what would you like to add? Um, I just want to remind everybody if you hit star six, you can come off mute with um, questions and comments. Or I don't see anything in the chat box, so I'm assuming that there's there hasn't been anybody um, comment there either. And I'd be interested, and in, uh, those of you, because I know many of you put in requests um, for your hospitals to see if we could get the ASARB ARNI and the evidence-based beta blocker information from your hospitals based on um, EHR or whatever. 
Um, I, and we we don't have the deadline's not up for that. Our goal is to, to be able to have those by our September meeting. But have you guys been able to get that? Are you starting to have you been able to find that data and be able to uh, review it so that we could collect some numerators and denominators to see how we're doing as a state so far? Oh, they're all having lunch, Kristen, while we're just talking. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if I did some sort of setting where, where nobody can come off mute. <laughs> yeah, maybe. It's possible. <laughs> uh, well, we're not, I mean, we're not going to, I think uh, we're not going to take more time of yours, but we did want to do this. If there's other people who would be valuable to see this, or if you'd like to give me an IT person to talk to to evaluate the uploading process, what Kristen and I will follow up with is um, we're going to go out and try to find it. If you're, if you're interested, you might just drop us a note because we'd like to see, do we have five interested hospitals or, you know, because if we have 10, then what kind of pricing break can we get for collaborative members? And how could we maybe all as a group get going on collecting some of this data, even if it's just the two measures that we've talked about? So you might let us know if you're interested. So we'll send out um, some more information, the actual form of what has to be done, and kind of some information on the next step. Any closing comments, Ms. Kristen? No, I just want to thank everybody for taking time out of their, their busy day, and we'll, we'll follow up with an email. And the email will have the recording. So just uh, pop that out to people who may not have been able to attend, who might want to take a look. Um, your folks who are doing stroke already will be familiar with the format and how this works and kind of the amount of time that it takes. However, most stroke places are not doing the limited form, especially your bigger hospitals. Um, and we would be encouraging the limited form um, on this particular study. So. All right. Well, I appreciate everybody joining, and um, we'll talk more about this in our August meeting. Have a great day.